Hey guys, Brandon here, and I'm bringing you guys another video on the Corvette. Uh, before I start, maybe the title kind of trips some people up. This will be a review solely on the 8-speed automatic, not on the Corvette itself. Uh, I've already done like a general review on the car, and there's plenty out there on uh, online. This will be a review solely on the 8-speed automatic you can get on the C7 Corvette. Uh, because every review that this car is featured in, even mine, the 8-speed automatics touched on a little bit, but you know it was like a year and a half ago since I made that video. So I kind of want to give you guys a proper review just on the transmission because every video I see where the car is featured with the 8-speed auto, it's talked about a lot for better and for worse, but I haven't really seen it be broken down the way I want to break it down today. So what I want to do for those who think I ramble on uh, quite a bit, I want to give you guys the quick and dirty answer and then the rest of the video we're going to elaborate on what I say and go out on a drive and I'll demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about. You can get the 8-speed automatic and the 7-speed manual and I think the conclusion I'll come up with at the end of this video is for the problems that are nitpicky that I find with the 8-speed auto, the people that consider those problems will just end up getting the 7-speed anyway for the people that don't mind that are fine with the automatic. What is that little problem I'm talking about? Well, I'll tell you this. If you just put it in drive mode and you let the car shift itself, no matter what kind of driving you're doing, it shifts great. It's a total excuse-free transmission. It's not like, oh, it shifts smoothly for a Corvette. No, it drives like a SLK. It's so smooth, it's seamless. The only reason you know it shifted is because you could hear the exhaust note. Other than that, it doesn't fall flat on its face like some other single clutch transmissions. Uh, it's a very, very smooth transmission for grocery getting and uh, mundane drives to work or whatever. When it's in automatic mode, it's super smooth. When you're on track and you're also in drive mode, you're not you know, flipping the paddles, it's also very good. Uh, when you put it in sport or track mode, it's a very smart transmission. It knows to hold the revs higher. It's almost as if it knows you're on like a long right-hander and it's holding the revs at like five grand and then it starts going again. So it's a very smart transmission. Drag races, it shifts very fast on its own. It knows when to shift. Uh, and back to the track, it knows when to downshift rev match. It's a smart transmission when you let it do its thing. However, when you put it down one more notch in manual mode and you want a little bit more driver involvement and flip the paddles, that's when it's a little out of date, I would say. In the era of unbelievable uh, paddle shift transmissions, looking at Ferrari's dual clutch, looking at uh, Porsche's PDK, we're in an era where paddle shifters are unbelievable to where this is kind of showing some age because transmissions now are so great and this one's decent. So I want to kind of expand on that with some driving. What the problem is, isn't the shift time. The time of the shift is actually very quick. It's with the uh, delay from when you pull the paddle to when it gets into gear. That's where it kind of you know falls out of date. And for a car that is such a great value, Stingray, Grand Sport, and Z06, it's, uh, it rivals the Europeans in every category, build quality, performance, the looks, the only place where they lacked is the the shift response. So when the C8 comes out or the ZR1 or whatever, if they really want it to be on par with the European with Europeans best, um, it needs to have a very responsive power shift transmission. However, like I said in the beginning of this video, for the people that mind that half a second or second delay, for the people that mind that, they'll probably just end up getting the manual anyway. For the people that don't mind that, they'll probably never use the paddles anyway uh, from what I can see. But that's pretty much wrapped up in a, in a hopefully fairly quick uh, uh, answer. So for the rest of this video, we're gonna go ahead and start it up and then go on a drive so we can kind of demonstrate what I mean by that. All right, so we're setting off here in touring mode, in automatic, in the normal drive setting. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's just pretty quick. It just got up two gears just like that. So it's a very quick transmission. You saw me not bobbing my head like crazy. This thing's probably in seventh gear at the moment, and I don't even know uh, because it's very smooth. And, and like I said, it's an excuse-free transmission. It's not like it's good for a Corvette. It's just a very smooth uh, automatic for any car. Uh, so yeah, well done in that category for the daily drivers who just want to put it in drive and, and you know, drive it as if it's an SLK, like I said, it does that very, very well. And if you want to get around a truck and you have to gun it a little bit, then uh, a nose went to downshift for you as well. 
and again that was just no paddle shifters you just forward a little bit and it knows when to pick up so i don't know if you guys were able to see there on that uh on that little acceleration but because i was in touring mode and total automatic uh when i kind of gave it some throttle it, was, it took a little bit of time for it to find the right gear to be able to accelerate a little quicker so to avoid that you can just put it in manual mode downshift a couple and then when you do floor it uh, you're ready for it so fourth gear so I don't know if you guys were able to hear that for like the click of the paddle to the shift now before you guys think I absolutely think this transmission's garbage that's not the case at all uh, it's just that in the wake of these like PDKs that are just incredibly good, I'm back in drive mode by the way, but in the wake of like all these transmissions that are just so good to in like today's standards, for example, the Porsche PDK, the, the paddle shift has such a short throw to it, and even then, before the paddle can even get to its resting position, you're already in the new gear building up RPMs. Not so much with this one. Um, and I'll try to get like a head mount. I got my GoPro with a head mount. Hopefully a little point of view um, will help with that so you guys can see with a paddle shifter. But we'll put it in manual again, seventh gear, downshift two. We're in fifth gear. Let's go fourth. Now it's ready, a little bit of time, and then when we mash it here, shift. Again, I have, it's, it's just something you have to get used to. Can you get around it? Yes. And the way you get around it is know that there's that response time. So in most cases, with like uh, with again, I'm gonna I'm gonna compare it to a really good transmission like a PDK or whatever. With a very very good dual clutch or something, it's so precise. So you know exactly when to shift. Right when it gets to redline, you shift it, and it's very predictable. Uh, now with this one, however, uh, you have to kind of prepare yourself you have to remember just how long it takes and then uh, and then you pull the paddle accordingly because if you're new to it what might end up happening is you think you're shifting at the exact right time but then you'll kind of bounce off the rev limiter a little bit because you shifted too late when really you pull the paddle at the right time but the shift was just a little too late so it's kind of bouncing off the rev limiter so you have to get used to that you kind of eyeball it you kind of see it right before it's at like 6,000 rpm then you shift it depends on how fast you're accelerating of course but you kind of anticipate where the rpm is going to be in that half second to a full second so you could get around it So hopefully in that like uh, point of view driving experience, I made the shifts really awkward so you could see it when it's obvious like when I shift. Um, but anyway, the conclusion I come up with this is the 8 automatic is not a bad transmission at all, especially for the people that are buying it because this, as if you, in case you guys are new, this is not my car and uh, my this is my dad's car and this is his daily driver. You know, he could be on the Bluetooth call during work and he just doesn't want to uh, shift for a daily driver, unlike myself. If I were specking out a Corvette, I personally would get the seven speed manual knowing it's lower around track, just so, you know, I can predict it a little bit more. For everyone who ends up getting the uh, automatic, I can see the market for that this car I made a video on just why the uh, the Corvette makes for a great daily driver so for the people that have the sole purpose of daily driving I could understand why they get the automatic and like I said in the beginning of the video I don't imagine those kind of buyers will ever use the paddle shifters my dad really doesn't um, but for the people that would and they get irritated by the delay which there's a few people they would just end up getting the seven-speed manual um, but again 
if this is gonna be your track toy and you want it an automatic, you can get around that little bit of a delay just by anticipating it. So, and the longer I drive this car with the paddle shifters uh, with the manual mode, I get used to that delay. It's not as precise as we would wish, but for the price compared to those $150,000, $250,000 cars, that's where it shows its price a little bit. So, like I said though, uh, if Corvette really wants to bring the C8 Corvette or the ZR1 to the moon, give it a good manual transmission, of course, but also give us a really, really well refined paddle shift transmission uh, that rivals a PDK, then, uh, then Corvette will be in that new class of supercar. But as for now, if it irritates you, get the manual. If it doesn't, it's a fantastic transmission. A lot of people want to complain about the transmission, say it's slow and clunky, not at all. They're just comparing it to like the world's best paddle shifters. And then, uh, and then obviously the seven speed manual is raved over and it's apparently a fantastic transmission. So yeah, that's the conclusion from this guys. Uh, I don't want you guys to think that I think the transmission's bad. I think both transmissions are good. I, it's just all preference. I, I would prefer a, uh, a manual. So I think it just comes down to that. But anyway, just a kind of quick video. I didn't really feel like this transmission was broken down that way um, in a video I've seen anyway. So hopefully this might clear things up if you're kind of tossed between what transmission you want to get. Maybe this would clear it up. But anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.